Well, hi. We're going to get a little creative today and kind of do something like I would do in the classroom uh, very naturally to talk a little bit about how you all can fluff up, plump up your creative briefs uh, from looking at some of those on your assignments on D2L. I just wanted to share some thoughts with you about that. I feel like I should have my briefcase, but I left it at the office. Darn, because I still have some interesting things in that briefcase. Um, but the things that I'm going to pull out of my briefcase today, my mental briefcase, are just some tips on maybe how you can enrich your creative briefs so that they can form a stronger um, strategy for whoever the writer is or the uh, designer is who will get that brief. Now, I know that in this class, you're going to be the one who's going to be doing the writing and uh, at least thinking about the visuals. But in a typical office, as we've talked about before, you'd be handing that to someone else, perhaps, to do at least a part of the project. So um, you have to put as much as you can into a creative brief so that whoever receives it next after you can, uh, without doing extra research, extra work themselves, actually go ahead and start writing or designing. Um, I, most of the briefs that I've seen thus far, and yes, I've been looking at your briefs, um, have been um, pretty sketchy. Uh, fairly scratching the surface rather than getting underneath the surface and finding out what's down there. So I want to give you an analogy. The briefs that I've been looking at so far um, have not been terribly creative, but I know we're just getting started, which is why I'm, I'm wanting to encourage you with these tips. But my analogy is, think about building this gorgeous house. Let's say you've got a million dollars to build a gorgeous house. And so you plan on having a house that has all this beautiful stone work and uh, turrets and gorgeous huge windows that are um, open to a beautiful view and beautiful rooms with uh, exquisite wood floors and marble countertops in the kitchen. You build this beautiful house and you're really excited about it and it's just a work of art, but you failed to build the foundation for it. So, you set the house on dirt and or on a hole with no foundation underneath it. And what's going to happen to the gorgeous stone and wood floors and um, countertops and beautiful windows and turrets? And what's going to happen? It's going to go in the hole and fall in upon itself is going to get cracks in it and fall apart because it doesn't have a strong foundation. What you're building in a creative brief is a strong foundation on which you can build your advertising. So this foundation needs to be there. When I ask you to whom are we talking? I not only want to know what the target audience is, and most times I will give you your target audience specifically. Maybe it's adults 55 and over. Maybe it's Hispanic women um, who are 25 to 40. Maybe it's um, millennials. Maybe it's baby boomers who are um, 
seeking an automobile and are of an income that's above $100,000 a year, I'll probably tell you those things. But in that section, we need to know more than that. It's not just your target audience, but tell me about that target audience. So get on the internet. I know you're there anyway. Um, go Google or Bing or however you search. Go search for information on this particular target audience on and what they think of these particular kinds of projects products, excuse me. So for instance, if you're talking about your water brand, Google millennials and bottled water, and you're going to get some pretty interesting information. Um, if you are just talking about millennials and food, type in millennials and food. What do they like to eat? What will they spend their money on? What appeals to them? Are environmental factors and uh, recycling important to them? Of course it is. Um, are they looking at more healthy foods? Of course they are. But these are things that you can find by doing your thorough research and building that solid foundation um, to create a really creative brief. It's very difficult to be creative when you don't have the information, the data that you need to create. So that's what a creative brief is for. It's to be that strong foundation. And one of the things that builds that strong foundation is your research that you need to do. And other people would be helping you probably in an agency, perhaps, maybe not. Maybe you're the research guru. That's a job. People need good researchers, so be one of those. And it's going to benefit you as you are designing or writing ads, but also as others are too. And, and that could end up being your niche, your little spot in the world um, is doing good research. Um, so find out what it is that this particular uh, target audience is interested in, what they um, respond to as far as appeals, what kind of appeals um, engage them, engender their interest. You can find that if you use your search words properly. Um, to find out what do they think now about the product. I, some of that is intuition, certainly. Ask yourself what you think of the product right now, but um, you're going to have to extrapolate. You're going to have to think, okay, what do they think about this product? And you can probably find some of those things online as well in your research. What do people think about this particular product? Is it Tootsie Rolls? Or is it um, texting and driving? Whatever it is, you can probably type in what do people think about and blank and then find, find some information there. So um, don't shortchange that particular section. You can actually uh, find some data on what people are spending their money on, which products are they spending their money on, and why or why not. Um, so fluff up, build that foundation. That's important. What do we want them to think? The, um, try not to fill that section of your creative brief with BS <laughs> or the obvious. Uh, of course we want them to think well of our brand. Of course we want them to use our brand. But let's be specific. What exactly do we want this target audience to do after they've seen this advertisement? What is it that we want to encourage them or call them to action about? Um, and then once you get into the section that includes your key messages and your advertising strategy, under strategy, 
strategy is not just, oh, let's get those people to buy our product. That's not a strategy. That's kind of a, an obvious thing. So what you want to do instead is determine what kind of ads um, are going to attract this particular target audience. Now, on some of your assignments or on a lot of your assignments, I'm going to tell you exactly what kind of ad you need to create. But in some of them, the early ones especially, you need to determine what kind of appeals are going to attract this particular audience. And is it social media? Or is it a, a younger group, like a millennial group, that is very engaged in social media? Are we going to put a lot of our money into social media, maybe Facebook ads, although Facebook ads aren't uh, necessarily something that millennials are looking at nowadays. That's, that's what the old folks such as I are looking at. Um, are you going to put your money into billboards or into television advertising? What does your target audience pay attention to? Um, and then, um, what color palette is appealing to them? Um, younger people like brighter colors. Older folks like more subdued colors. Uh, think, think about color palettes. Think about how you're branding yourself for your differing target audiences. Uh, these things need to go into strategy. And then also using the research that you've found on this target audience and what they respond to and what they think of your product and how people are using the product now, then you can actually build a strategy to respond to those um, situations. So um, just like to see a little more research, I guess, and a little more strategic thinking. And I think that's going to come to you more and more naturally as you get a little practice at it. I'm not expecting, um, you know, the Taj Mahal kind of idea from the very first. Um, you don't have to build built more estates on that foundation quite yet. But I just wanted to share with you some of my thoughts about how you can pump up your creative briefs so that um, they'll actually give you and whoever else might be using them the fodder, the information that you all need to actually create some um, good, solid advertising that's based on research and on how well you know that product. That's another thing that I need to mention to you. When you are creating a creative brief, I just love to use the word create, um, you need to know your product. So your product research section of your creative brief needs to be very thorough. And you can do that how? We talked about that early on in the semester in several different venues in some of my lecture notes in a video. Um, you need to find out as much as you can about that product. If you can access brochures, um, if you can access their annual report, if you can go to their website and find out information, if you can, um, of course in real life you would talk with people who work there, you need to know the company. You need to know the brand very well, and you need to know the product that you're trying to promote. If you do not know these things, it's definitely going to show in your work. It's going to show in your creative brief first, and then you're going to find it difficult to actually write advertising for a product that you don't understand. So that said, you need to do your research on your product, on the company, on the brand. Include that in the creative brief so anyone who gets it will not have to go back and do that research themselves and they'll understand and have a wealth of information on which to build their writing or their design work. Then you also want to research the target audience or target audiences and what they're interested in and how they relate to this kind of a product. 
and fluff up that creative brief. Build a nice solid foundation to set that gorgeous advertising house on. And then you're going to be much more creative and your briefs are going to look really good and your ads are going to appeal to people and be successful. And that's what it's all about because I'm going to tell you that in advertising and marketing, results are what matter. It could be the most gorgeous stone advertising house on the best foundation ever. But what matters in the end is results. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to get results for our clients. We've got to build it on a strong foundation. So you can go ahead and work on those creative briefs. Fluff up your briefs, folks, but fluff them up on a good foundation of research. Thanks. I know you're going to do well.